Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias, mi gente. Yogi -Oh. Welcome to Daily Discipline number 293. My name is Rob Hoback. Happy that you're here, honored and humbled that you continue to return. It is a manic Monday. It's the fifth day of August. It's a work day for most of us, so let's go. First things first, still the realist. I am also sore. Yeah. I'm a little now when I say I'm sore, I'm a little sore from spending, you know, a couple days working in the row or in the yard, got a little sunburn, you know, but that's not what's sore. The sore I am, you know, and we've all been there. Like I can feel I'm getting sick, right? We got it right here. It just got the lethargic, the body aches, it sucks, but we can get through it. Um what I'm thankful for is that last week, last Sunday, um, I was all upset, you know, got home, not all, all upset, but I was a little disappointed that I uh, got home from a road trip, turned on the television, couldn't wait to watch 60 Minutes and E60. Both of them were reruns. Yeah. Then I went to football practice and I ran into King James. He's like, hey, how was 60 Minutes? I'm like, it's terrible. It was a rerun. Saw it before about, um, you know, one of the, the, the big story there last week was about Sammy Sosa. Like, yeah, I've seen the Sammy Sosa story, right? No, thanks. Um, regardless, this Sunday, not reruns, and I was not disappointed. So we started with E60. Uh, first thing on, you know, I talked about Tom Brady, you know, celebrating his 42nd birthday and getting a new contract. So congratulations, Tommy. TV12 is working. It is impressive. They also did a follow-up on a young man by the name of Christian Pulichik, who, uh, is the highest paid American football or soccer as we call it a uh, player in the premier league so the premier league to european soccer is the equivalent of the nfl and this kid's tearing it up and so it was it was interesting to see him then they got to the good stuff uh they introduced you to a gentleman not a gentleman a man by the name of conrad Manwaring, who um 40 years for the last 40 years has leveraged the fact that he ran in the olympics which he did taking nothing away from but then he positioned himself as a coach with the secret club and molested just countless young men under the guise of he was going to be their coach and um you know i bet there were times he thought he had gotten away with it all that stuff that nobody was ever going to catch him nobody's ever going to say it. because as most predators do he made sure he did his best to only prey on people who weren't going to say anything so what he did is he found like young men, 12, 13, 15, 16 year old kids, heterosexual boys that he then molested. And he knew they weren't going to say anything about it because they were too embarrassed because they all thought the same thing. Like I allowed that to happen to me. What's that say about me? What's wrong with me? Right. So these kids just suffering in silence. Right. Uh, it took me back to six months ago or whatever it was. And I was watching that story about Michael Jackson and Oprah talked about we need to stop calling it, um, what did she say? Stop calling it sexual assault and call it sexual seduction because that's what it is. It was the same story, right? Bringing them in, telling them lies, telling them not to tell anybody, and he was getting away with it. And he was getting away with it until a couple years ago, uh, one of the guys that, that he had molested wrote a, you know, posted something, and another guy who had been molested by him responded to his post and said, hey, and put the guy's name in there. And that was the first time his name had been on the internet. And boom, it just spread like wildfire. And next thing you know, these guys found their people. They found there was a bunch of them. And so they rose up. They came together. And uh, probably the most, I don't know, the one that they profiled was a young guy. I mean, this kid was young. I'm guessing he was in his early 20s. And he was pissed. As he should be, right? Like, as he found out that all he, this guy had been doing this forever. So he took his phone, he found out where the guy was and confronted him. Yeah, it was amazing. Guy tried to hit him with his umbrella. So here's this guy that's been running around, right? Molesting people, just being a piece of shit. And when somebody calls him out, he like scurries like a bug trying to get away and then hits him with his umbrella. And the kid was awesome. He was having none. He's like, oh, you want to hit me now? Go ahead. Now I got it on. Now I've got a video. Right. Of you hitting me. It was amazing. Um, and so then they told the story about how this guy's, you know, he's. Yeah, I think he's in jail now. He's awaiting prosecution out in California. And, you know, just super sad. Uh, 
for all the survivors that had to deal with that shit because that guy couldn't control himself. Um, but, you know, just I, I'm thankful again, you know, that I think that's the most beautiful thing of the Internet is that that we've seen so far is that people can no longer um, it's going to be much more difficult for them to behave the way they did before and operate in secrecy um, at other people's expense. So that was very, very encouraging. I got fired up watching. So then I watched 60 Minutes. And the first story on there was Sandy and Lonnie Phillips, who lost their daughter. Um, she was murdered in Aurora, Colorado, when the, the gunman went in and opened fire at the Batman movie. Terrible. And, you know, you, you, at least for me personally, you watch these things on TV and you're like, gosh, that's just terrible. And then you hear the people talk and your heart breaks for them and it's just so senseless. Like they didn't have any connection to that kid that went into that theater at all. Right. Whatever he was pissed off about had nothing to do with them. Yet there's a whole network of people for each person that are just struggling and hurting. And it's just awful. Anyway, so Sandy and Lonnie, uh, after their daughter was murdered, you know, decide the, the enough is enough. And so they they hired a lawyer and they filed a lawsuit against the manufacturers and they lost. And then a judge ordered them. Uh, to pay restitution. It's like $250,000. Bankrupted. They literally went bankrupt. So they lost their daughter. They sought repu uh, uh, they, they sought um, retribution through the courts, right? Didn't take, didn't take the law into their own hand. They went through the, and were again defeated and then bankrupt. So you lost your kid, then you're bankrupt. And so, they didn't stop. They said, you know what, what we're going to do? We're going to rent our house out. We're going to live out of our travel trailer, travel trailer, and we'll go across the country and we'll be support for these other people. And unfortunately, they have plenty to do. Like we talked about yesterday, and they showed them, you know, going and talking to people in Thousand Oaks, you know, and these other places and just, just talking to people. And uh, super sad, super um, just heart-wrenching to watch. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, she talked about finding their lane and, and or reigniting their purpose and understanding that, that this was their new normal and their new normal was that they were going to help other people get through. Beautiful story. Shitty, shitty act by one person that leads to a beautiful story, which takes me back to this. Find your people, no matter what your, yeah, find your people, no matter what you're struggling with, right? Like those boys, they found each other. They didn't mean to. It just happened. They found each other. They're like, Ooh, we're better together. Just like these folks. Like, it's a terrible situation that leads them here. But then once they find their people, they're better together. Guess what? We all are. Hands up. Peace out. We are better together. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you then. Deuces.